it's a real privilege for me to be alive. I mean, I, I'm, I, you know, I've never, never done anything quite like this before. I know I've interviewed Britsy a few times, but <clears throat> not live like this. So, so what I've got, um, Natalie has sent me in a load of questions. We've had a load of questions emailed in, and in on Facebook. So I'm going to try, I'm just going to read them through, and if I know who they're from, I'll make sure I, I, I give them a share out as well. Uh, and some of the questions are for Roger, some are for Maritza, some are for both. So I'm going to start with one from Maritza. Okay, so Maritza. And the lucky one. Can you, a good one. <laughs> no pressure. So when Roger was a child, did you ever have concerns about the pressure he would face carrying the Gracie name? No, not really. Okay. No, it was normal to us. Uh, the pressure that he would have later was on on him, but to us uh, at home, not not really. We are used to the name Gracie or being around Gracie my whole life. So no, not really. Or maybe I didn't really think about it. Is it is it too noisy here? Is it's a little it? noisy, but we can hear you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so Roger, carrying on from that. So, at what age did you realize that there was an expectation for you to be a fighter, and did you ever rebel against that expectation? I think I always felt, you know, it's like with those small things, like friends asking, "Do you train?" You know, everyone around me really expect me to train. So it was, you know, it's like when people talk about it, when they ask, it's like, it's almost like it's confirming that I train, you know, it's not even a, much of a, a question. So ever since I was young, there was always, oh, do you train, do you train? Oh, the family, you'll be a fighter, you'll be a champion, this and that. So it's, it's kind of normal, with the, you know, the, the environment you, you grow up. So it doesn't really become pressure, you just get used to it, you know? And did you ever feel the need to sort of rebel against it or, you know? Not really, because I, I just decided to really become a fighter. Like later on, you know, I was like 14, 15. Before that, there was no, I never decided to be a fighter. And it's not that this is what I have to do, or, you know. I never thought that this is what I have to do. Or no one told me that I had to, to do this or be like this, you know. It was just a matter of a do you train? Oh, you have to train, you know, that's that sort of a thing. And then it was really up to me when I decided to 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 be a full time yeah, fighter, you know, competitor. All right, back to Maurizio. Maurizio, how did you encourage Roger to become interested in jiu-jitsu as a trial a child? And did you train with him yourself? Mark, it was a very difficult time in my life I, I was working a lot and I it's just something that you you, you we in Brazil every family puts their kids to do two things one is to learn how to swim everybody has to learn how to swim because there's swimming pools and rivers, beaches everywhere. So that's the first thing they do. Secondly, they're, they're put in a jiu-jitsu academy. And Roger was just the same. It's something that, oh, you got to train. You have to go. Oh, I'm thinking about it. No, 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 no. You have to do it. You have to go. Uh, there's friends of mine today that say, Roger used to tell me that he hated going to the gym. And, and it might be right. You know, uh, they were young. He knew, uh, pro he probably knew that he would have to train no matter what anyway. <laughs> Family pressure or what have you. But yeah, I, I yeah, I made him go. You have to go. Did you guys train together a lot when he was a child? Not, not that much. I worked a lot. I was working all day. That's understandable. Okay, yeah. so this is a question for both of you. So I guess I don't know. You can maybe take it in turns to answer this one. 
What advice would you give to parents who are trying to support their children who train? I think it's, it's not, not to pressure your kid to, to, to force him to do anything, you know? Because I think, that because if you do so, the kid will obey you because he's a kid, you know, he's your, and then he has to do what the parents tell him. But that can play against later on in life, you know, it's almost like, oh, now I'm not under my parents' uh, uh, wings, you know, so now I can free, be free and then you go the opposite way if they force you to do something before. So it's try to do in a way that, I mean, you, you, you force him, but you don't, you know, you have to, like, like with my son, I don't force him to train, you know, he, sometimes he tells me he doesn't like training, I, I don't take him to the academy, I will take him whatever, when he wants, but slowly, <laughs> I, you know, I talk to him, so I try to almost put into his head how important it is to train, you know, try to explain him that the benefits that he'll, that he'll have later on in life, you know, apart from being like a fighter or competitor, but, you know, slowly I'm trying to convince him that how important it is for him to train. And I think now he's starting to want to train on his own, you know? So I stop asking, you know, let's go train. And now he's asked, telling me that let's train. It's fantastic. And Rich, have you got you anything you'd to, like to add? Yeah, you have to understand that when Roger was, was young, when, when Hulls died, I, I stepped away, uh, I kept myself out of jiu-jitsu for a while. And Roger was growing up. So it's not like I had a gym and he went with me to the gym and we could train or what have you. I was working all day and I had a job and um, I, just, I just couldn't. The only thing that I could do was tell him to go to the gym. He used to go reluctantly sometimes, but he went. He trained with uh, the Shandy Piper, he trained with Hanzo. And then finally went off to, his mother moved to Baja. And um, he went to live with her for a while. And that was it. Then his journey started. That, that's when his journey started really when, when he was like, what, 14? No, 16 or something, 15, something like that. 14, 15. Four, 14, 15, yeah. When he went to the South, his cousins were training, but he can say that better than, than me. So Roger, this question is for you. Um, how old were you when you first competed? And uh, did you experience many losses? And how do you think those losses shaped you as a person? I don't really remember when I first competed. Uh, I remember competing judo before competing jiu-jitsu. So I think the memory I had, maybe my father can correct me, the memory I had competing first was in a judo tournament, which yes, I lost was. in five, five seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I got you pony in five seconds. <laughs> and I, well, I mean, it's disappointing, you know, no kids like losing, but you just have to. You know, if you, cause, but back then I wasn't really dedicated. So it's like, you know, if you want to win, you just got to train harder. <laughs> Richard, you're yeah. going to say something then? No, I remember that competition. It was in a club called Flamengo, I think, or Monchi Lieben, one of those clubs there on the Lagoa. And um, yeah, we were training judo. And um, it wasn't very good. <laughs> but, you know, it didn't really matter anyway. It didn't really matter at all. It was like when I was competing when I was a kid. I competed in judo as well. I don't think I won very much. Just one of those things. It's very normal for kids in Brazil to actually do or, ju or judo or jiu-jitsu, you know? Very, very normal. It's like te uh, teaching them how to swim. Same thing. You s it's very, very, everybody does it. I bet Gustavo did that too. <laughs> Gustavo, did you start with judo or jiu-jitsu? 
Not swimming. Everybody, no. <laughs> every, everybody in Brazil does that. All the families. Everybody. It's funny. It's it's a it, it's like tradition. We all put our kids to 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 swim and fight. Important <laughs> skills. Hey. Important skills, life skills. Oh yeah. <laughs> Okay, Mauricio, at what point did you realize that Roger was talented? And was there anything in particular that you did to nurture this talent? Mark, I think all, not, not really. All, all, all I did was support him in everything that he ever tried to do. And um, yeah, you can, you can see that you're, your kid's talented, like I saw that my son was, but uh, it's difficult to explain. You, you, you want your kid to, to do well, but you want a, as well him to be doing something that he really likes. So until that point in his life that he decided, no, this is what I'm going to do. And that's what I'm going to train for. You, you're always supportive and yeah, fine. That, that, that's it. Let's go. And, um, you can never predict what's going, what's going to happen. Nobody could predict that Roger would be who he is now when he was 14 years old, but you you notice that yeah he's got what it takes but does he really is he really gonna want that for for or he might change people sometimes change they they want to do something else right it's not necessarily something that he he's gonna stick to it you never know but yeah he had talent Oh, is that? <laughs> Roger, this, this is a question from Bada for you. <clears throat> what is the best way to deal with the change in intensity from training to competition? And how do you replicate the competition environment in your own training? So how can you say again the first part? Okay, so what is the best, uh, best way to deal with the change in intensity from training in the gym to actual competition? You just have to make the training the gym as intense as competition. Okay. So when you go compete, there's, there's no surprise, you know? So I guess, like, you know, I grew up with a very, like, competitor uh, academy. So it's, there was the, like, daily competition or the intensity of, of the training. You know, Gracie Baja back then was very intense. It was just as hard as competition. Sometimes harder because people... Most of my training partners, they were better than me, you know, they were, they, because I, like, I was big and I like to train hard. So I always train with better people. So it's, you know, when I used to compete people my level, it was actually easier because they were just the same belt as I was. I mean, apart from when I got to the black belt. But, that, you know, all the time before that, it's, you know, I had much harder training, but, uh, you know, in the academy than I had in competition. So for me, it was, was actually normal. I didn't feel any difference from like competing and training at the academy. I had big, much bigger challenge in the academy than I had in competitions. That's very interesting. Yeah. Well, Roger was really lucky at the time. Gracie Baja was, was you know, uh, one of the best or pro one of the best, no, was pro was the best gym that you could train in Rio. That had the more number uh, uh, of of good and excellent training partners and competitors at the time. You know, the 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 sessions in the morning you would get there for a ten o'clock session, and there was like fifty b black belts on the mat. It was booming. It was the center of 
of everything. You know, if you wanted to get good, you wanted to train hard, you would you would go to Gracie Baja and Kahlinj and Master Feitoza, Oleta and oh man, a zillion other black belts that were there that and purple belts and brown belts and oh it, it was it was the best environment a, a fighter could could ask for in, in in those days to train it's like going to henzo's today you know it's the you want to train you want to train hard you want to you want to learn get tough and uh, that's that's the place to go or or here in london come come here or get squished by Gustav or get beaten up by Bark Martin like he does every Tuesday morning. <laughs> Poor me. Poor me. Uh, that's not my recollection of Tuesday mornings. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so moving on. Maritza, this one's for you, but I think actually it applies to Roger now as well. It can be very stressful watching your child compete. What advice can you give to the parents of children who compete? I haven't got that yet, so. <laughs> <laughs> Tristan competes a little bit, is he not? No, no. Oh, okay, so this was for you, Maurizio. Drink plenty of water, and don't drive your, don't drive your kid to the competition. <laughs> 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 and please don't jump the fence if he loses trying to get beat up the judge. <laughs> Man, I I can't I, I can't figure out a way to not, not be stressful. It, there's there's no way in hell that you're gonna watch your son fighting competing at a level that Roger was and not get nervous. Even when he was a blue belt. Purple belt, brown belt. It just kept getting worse and worse and worse. Heart attacks were right around the corner. <laughs> there was a time in Rio that he he wouldn't go to, with me in my car to the competition. I, I'd get so i get so nervous that uh, I think I got a bit angry, and um, he would go in in his friend's car, and we would meet there, and. Um, yeah, I only learned to deal with that later, you know? It's funny. It's not it's not an easy thing for a parent to, you know, it's it is quite nerve-wracking. Mm. It is. He he he'll, he'll learn that later on. Don't worry. <laughs> I've watched mine compete a little bit just just small competitions and even that it's awful. Yeah. Yeah. You want to you want to jump in? Or? Yeah, it's very hard. Oh man, yep. Right. Okay, Roger. This is a question from Louis. Uh, what do you do before comps? I get caught up in the noise in my head, and I can feel like I don't give the best account of myself. Did you have any advice that you could give to to Louis about how to prepare himself before a comp? But before, how long before? Well, I think just I think he means on the day in the room. I guess on the day I had a, when I used to live in Rio, I had a routine because I live right by the beach. So me and my cousins and a few friends used to wake up in the morning and then before anything, we go to just for a dive in the sea, just to kind of wake up. We used to go in, it was like five minutes walk, you know, less to the beach. So just walk in, like dive in, or usually cold water, go to the sand, stretch a little bit, and then get home, cold shower then drink, then eat like normal breakfast. You know, you don't want to change your routine. You cannot change what you've been doing before. You know, you don't want to eat something that you haven't eaten in, you know, it's just, so we had a breakfast, usually the breakfast that I always have, usually like a smoothie or like eggs and toast or something like that. And then, you know, just listen to music. You know, you don't want to really think about competing or competition the day before, the, the day of the fight, because you kind of, Everything that you could do, it's you've done already. There's nothing that you can. It's not gonna. Nothing will make a difference. Zero. There's no nothing you can do to improve your performance on the day. You know, mm -hmm. it's the opposite. I think 
I try to stay as relaxed as I can to not let the adrenaline tires me. I think that's the, 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 the thing that people should worry the most, you know, be fresh for when they're going to compete. So, you know, not think of competing because you will get nervous immediately. You know, the moment you see yourself competing, your heart goes brrr, and then the adrenaline kicks in and, you know, that just energy consuming. So I, you know, you talk about anything else, you kind of listen to music, try to distract yourself and just do a good, uh, do the same thing when you get there, you know, like I like to keep on my own Zoom, you know, like my own world. I don't really talk to people much. I talk, but like little and do a good warm up because the warm up, you will release the adrenaline out of your body. That's the most important. So you are not gonna cramp up when you're competing. If you don't warm up, suddenly, especially your forearm, you know, like you'll get tired faster. For sure, it's normal. Like my first fights, you, you because your body's not fully warm, you will be tired in the end of the fight. So I usually, I used to be more tired in my first fight than you know my second or third because of the adrenaline and even it's normal to, even though I look calm, you know, but it's normal to be a bit. You know, the adrenaline kicks in, but you just try to control it, you know, and just do a good warm up and go for it. Okay, thank you. Um, this is sticking with the theme of competition. This is a question from Daniel. Are there any competition rules you would like to see changed or removed? And this is for both of you guys. So. Uh, not really. I mean, there's always a, like a few things that you could change, but yeah. Uh, I think the main organization for jiu-jitsu, without a doubt, is the IBJJF. You know? I think they're the one who has the biggest com uh, commitment to jiu-jitsu, you know, not just to themselves or try to make rules to benefit them or out of their own head. So I'm very close contact with the IBJJF, and you know, I can say that for certain. So the rules are never perfect. You know, it's constantly changing, constantly trying to improve. So there's some piece and bits too to change but I think the way it is you know it's, it's, it's good enough you know you cannot complain because it will never be perfect regardless of how you try to make it perfect it will never be perfect people will try to bend the rules they'll try to use the rules to their own benefits and you know it's, 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 no, it's, it's unavoidable so no one will ever be fully satisfied with the rules in any sport anywhere everywhere in, you know it's impossible so um, I think with the IBJJF, it's, it's pretty close to being the, I mean, for sure, it's, it's the best out of all the, the organization or tournaments, but they are pretty, pretty good. Richard, do you have anything to add? Uh, it's the same as Roger. I agree with him about the IBJJF. They've been, they've been around for so long and they've been adapting themselves for so long. And in the end of the day, nobody's perfect but they try hard. I see them con consulting with Roger and other athletes, you know, that sometimes want to add something here or there, but I think they, they do a good job. They, they've been at this for a long, long time. And yeah, I think they, they just, they, tr they, they do try, you know, people might think, oh, it's all, they don't, but yeah, they do. They do try, they try to adapt because they, there's a lot of things that change in, in Jiu Jitsu, you know? Those 50-50 uh, guards or those things that people try to hold the opponent forever, not allowing him to move or, and then trying to score an advantage to win or what have you. Even that, they, they, they try to look on that and they try to change a bit. So I think they're in the right path, and yeah, they do they do excellent chant competition. They they're they're good. I don't have anything <clears throat> that I would think majorly. Oh, they have to change this, have to change that. Of course, there are some things that I don't agree, but that's that's not my problem. I'm not competing. <laughs> <laughs> Um, this, this question is for Roger and it's from Jacopo. Who do you consider to be your greatest opponent and why? Uh, 
I'm, I'm always between Jacare and Shande. I think Shande I fought more time. I think I fought in eight times. Jacare I fought five. Yeah. Jacare is a better competitor, I would say. Even though that I consider never losing to him, even though that you know the referee gave him, you know, from the five times, two two of the times he went, you know, he got the victory. But I don't consider that I lost the fight, even though the fight was a harder fight. It was a very hard fight. Shandy, I did lose to him, but I consider Jacare a much, not much, but better competitor than Shandy. Like, I, I could never, from all those fights with Jacare, even in any of those, like, I never dominated him. You know, I still made him in the ADCC, like when I broke his arm by that fight, he got uh, victorious, but uh, I could never dominate him. You know, and Shandy, I dominated him a few of the fights. Mm. So sometimes even, you know, it was very close. Sometimes he won by his, like a small advantage. But some fights, I, I think I submitted him three or four times in, in those fights. I dominated him a, a few other times. So it was Jacare was, I knew was always, this is going to be a hard fight. Shandy, sometimes it's hard. Sometimes I, you know, I get the better of it during the fight. So I would say Jacare was, was a, Probably the my biggest competitor because he was I consider him being a harder fight. It's a very exciting period of time to be a, a spectator with the three yeah. guys. Yeah. It's, it's, it's very, very interesting and exciting. So, yeah. Great fights. Um, Maurizio. Okay, this is a slight. Uh, this is from Steve. How do you feel? How did you feel about Roger pursuing a career in MMA after his jiu-jitsu competitions? And did you see this as a natural progression of moving forwards for him? Uh, I kind of always knew that that was going to happen anyway. He went from from the the jiu-jitsu environment to the no-gi, starting with the Abu Dhabi 2003 and then doing that beautiful 2005. And, and from there on... Uh, I kind of knew that sooner or later he would be involved in MMA. Uh, the only thing with the MMA is that because I never, I never had any experience in it, as my instructor died before we we had a chance to even get a look at that kind of thing, and um, yeah, it was something that. I knew that I, I couldn't offer him any, any kind of help, you know what I mean, in that aspect. I had nothing to contribute. Man, what, I'm sorry. It's two, two kids are making such a noise in, in, in the gym because of the echo. It's okay, we can make it well. Você devia ter ficado pra cá, pai. Devia ter ficado ali, pai. Change. I'm telling for the part. Thanks for you. Maya, não deixa ela fazer barulho também não. Oh. Tá bom. Estudar. Tá. Room, otherwise it does echo. There you go. Okay, Roger, this this is a question for you. After you retired from competition, was there an adjustment period where you felt you had to change your mindset from that of one of an active competitor? Not really, because that I I I saw happening slowly. You know, it, was, it wasn't like one day I'm, I'm, I would, I decided to retire. You know, there was. It was in my mind for a few years, like, you know, knowing. I knew, you know, after 35, you kind of know it's coming, you know. At some point, you just have to decide when that time will come. So even, like, early 30s, I always told myself, I'm like, I'm going to compete till I'm maybe 37, around that time. Like, I never saw myself competing, you know, 40, 40-something years. Like, it's, you know, like, just... So that's like not really what I want. I'm like, I'm going to compete till I can. And then I'm just going to do something else with my life, you know? And I thought 
I saw that happening, you know, like, you know, business and starting to get involved with other things. And I knew it was like, it was getting harder and harder to, to be an athlete and try to do other things. So I kind of, I kind of saw it coming. So when it came, I'm like, it's, you know, I was already prepared. So it wasn't nothing new. It's just now I just need to use the same mentality I had competing, you know, try to use what else I'm doing in my life, you know, no. It's if I can apply the same mentality that made me the fight I was in anything else, I mean, then I can be, I can be just as great in anything else I do, you know. Once you know the way, you just have to, you know, use the same way to achieve other other things. That's a nice mindset. I like that. Yeah. Um, both. This is to both of you. Have either of you experienced any significant injuries in your careers? Uh, I had a few. Nothing really. Seriously, the the worst injury I had was my knee. And training with training, I think for MMA fight, I don't know. I, I twist my knee three times, and the first time was the worst. And I found that my knee is not so stable. And the doctor told me that you know that might be it. And I was like, I'm, you know, like thirty something. And then he told me the patella doesn't really sit in on the knee, and it allows the knee to twist more. And luckily, the first time that happened, I was like 30-something years. I don't remember how old I was, but it was like early 30s. And then he told me that's like, look, it's, it's hard for me to say, but it's because of your knee, this and that. So, you know, maybe your career, it's, it's over. I was like, there's no chance. <laughs> and I thought, no, okay, it's like, you know, that did happen the first time. It's like, it's whatever, you can say whatever you want, it's not over. And then I twisted three, two more times after that, but not as bad. And they just stopped. But I, you know, after the first time, I felt my knee not as stable as I felt before, you know. But never really stopped me competing. I just have to be slightly more careful. Mm -hmm. But my, you know, neck always hurt. I have a bad shoulder for 20 years. <laughs> my lower back is always bothering me. But nothing really big, you know, nothing seriously that. I can still train normally. I can train hard. Maybe not as hard as I used to, like every day. You know, before I used to train really hard every day. But I think age is a big contributor to that, you know. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, but, you know, that's just a, a few pains, but nothing really serious. Never I broke a bone. Guys. Actually, I broke a toe once, but apart from that, never had yeah. any surgery. No surgeries? Mm -hmm. And how about you, Maurizio? I'm um, built like a brick house. Yeah, I, I know. I have nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had noticed. <laughs> <laughs> I have a little injury on my left shoulder. Probably be from training with Mark Barton every Tuesday morning. And you should, uh, aside, you have no idea what my aside, body feels like after that. <laughs> no, never really major surgeries, but when I was in my late 20s, Paul's died and I took a time a little bit off to I was only training with friends, so I only intensified that really later on. And I have, yeah, a few nudges here and there. It's normal. We were in a very close contact sport where our body is constantly put under strain or twisted or turning or what have you. Yeah, it's normal that we injure ourselves a, a, a little something here and there, but thank God not, nothing major. N never had surgery because of jujitsu or, or anything like that. No, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. Yeah. You seem pretty healthy to me. Hey, you seem pretty healthy to me. Oh, Mark, don't say that. <laughs> I'm well now. Three months without doing anything, just getting in the sun. Nally beats me up, though. She goes hard yeah. and rough. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure it's Natalie. 
Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, man. <laughs> we, we, we finished training. I have yeah. to lie on the couch and poor, snooze. Poor, poor Mauricio getting beat up by Natalie. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to give me a bad name, right? He tells everyone I'm so rough. <laughs> we know that, we know what it's like to train with Maurizio. <laughs> My wrist. Yeah, not... <laughs> oh, your wrist. Yeah, you wait till you train with him again after the lockdown, Mark. He's just slightly heavy. <laughs> oh, oh god you have had to mention that yeah he's been on my case you know if you if, yeah. if, if, if you felt his weight before you wait now <laughs> mark i gained two kilos and he's been bothering me with that so two kilos is not too bad yeah two kilos two in kilos one leg two of the other one <laughs> <laughs> like a kilo and a half on each arm uh, maybe five in the day <laughs> <laughs> I can still use my clothes, so I'm still good. <laughs> uh, I guess I'll find out. <laughs> yeah, you will. <laughs> uh, that's something to look forward to. Uh, okay, Ritz, I've got a question for you. Um, Jiu-Jitsu is difficult and progress is not always continuous. What advice would you give to someone who's training but is having limited success in sparring and is getting quite disheartened with their lack of progress. Don't give up. You know, if you're having problems with your training, go to your instructor. That's why we're here for. You know, have a talk with your instructor. Tell him your 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 listen, your 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 how do I put this? Your 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 concerns. And have have a sit down with with, with him and, and talk about it, you know. And I, I I do that here. A lot of people come to me sometimes. Oh, I can't. I I I I I feel like there there's like they call it the wall. Not the people reach a wall and they have to work their way around it or over it or what have you. And I think that's that's normal, especially when you're a blue belt that you have to stay there a long long time. It's usually the belt that people stay the longest. Uh, and um, it's normal that you have difficulty sometimes, that you feel that you're, you're, pro you're not progressing it, it enough the way you want it to be. But you, you will you just have to be a little, cons you have to be consistent and keep on going and get, work on, on your difficulties and talk to your instructors and get a, a and it's it's all about you know in the end of the day of having the proper and the right training partners you know you have good training partners you have nice people in the gym that can help and you can exchange ideas about difficulties of one and the other you know it's important it's important and the advice that i can give is is that don't give up and sit back and talk about it you know have a chat with your instructor if you unless your your gym doesn't provide usually that's the way forward just good advice thank you Maritza. um roger there's a question here for you do you think that you and your father have similar fighting styles there's a lot of similarity. There's no, I would say completely. Uh, it's it, the, like the, I think the most uh, similarity we had is the weight distribution. You know, the way the pressure pressure game that I learned a lot from my dad. The way to you know to pressure the your opponent from top position. That is, uh, it's it's just very similar. And then but there's like some either. peculiar things that he does that's different than what I do. You know, it's like everyone is different, you know. It's very difficult to have the same game, especially having a, you know, if I had the, the same body shape as my dad, I think we would have more, uh, a, a more similar game. But I think because of our body shapes and we have 
slightly different, but the way the pressure game is, I think, is very similar. He's a lot meaner, though. <laughs> Mark knows very well who's the meaner here. <laughs> 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 this is a question from Hamza for both of you. Uh, which non jiu jitsu sports person has inspired you both? For me, a, a few, you know. I think I always try to look people who achieve greatness, you know, like in what they do, like what sort of mentality they had, you know, that always inspired me. And, all the other sports and other areas from, uh, from uh, you know, apart from jiu-jitsu. You know, like, you know, boxers, even like runner, runners, you know, like I watched the documentary of uh, Isaiah Bolt many times, even though that he came later on on my life when I was older. No, I mean, a little older, but, you know, like Muhammad Ali, those sort of uh, people, you know, there's a few others, but... I think I always try to inspire me what made them great. You know, I think the one thing that they all had very similar is the mentality, the winning mentality that, you know, to be a winner, you need to have that sort of mentality. And if you don't, you'll never be a winner. That belief, you know, all, 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 all of them, they had that uh, belief inside them that made them who they are. And I always kind of try to absorb them as much as I can. From, uh, from them, you know. And how about you, Maurizio? <clears throat> well, in my case, it was different because I wasn't competing. So I was more on the teaching side. So I looked back for inspiration on my, my own instructors, Jean Alberto Bahia, my first one, and obviously Halls. I tried to imitate him and how to be in the gym, how to help the students and all that. And I always like to watch major athletes competing, but yeah, it's not something that was, you, you, you like the, the mentality of them, you know, and the, <laughs> to tell you the truth, the greatest inspiration for me was my son, Roger. Yeah. <laughs> that was him. He's very yeah. inspiring for many of us. So. Yeah. We've watched every single fight during lockdown. Maybe like five or six times. I've watched really? quite a few of them as well. So. Yeah. I keep, I keep watching them, yeah. Yeah. I watched nice. tradition as well again. So, so. Mm. I tried to spot myself in there. But there was one time that Roger finished the fight and I was running up the stairs and he told everybody that was in the Zoom meeting, oh, there goes my father, my father running for food. Yeah, he, he, <laughs> fell, he, he, fell, he fails to forget that he finished his fight. I was there with his bag, with his water, with anything that he wanted. Uh, running, my dad running from school. That was awful. <laughs> 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 yeah. Okay, Maritza, this is a question from Avant Garde Jiu Jitsu. Uh, what would be your advice to someone who has just got their black belt? I, well, I think when you get the black belt, you start a completely new journey. You know, it's a, it's a great responsibility. People will look, look up to you a lot. And, um, you know, you're representing uh, already, even though you were before, but even more so. You're representing the the person and 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 the gym that gave you that 
that black belt, you know, after you've been training there for so many years, you were rewarded with, with that. And just, just the advice is, is very simple. Just keep on going. Your journey didn't stop because you, you, you got your black belt. It's starting a, a, a newer one. Some people are, are just, just, just got their black belts and they'll just keep on training because that's what they like. Others will go on to open their own gyms or do other things. Or it's a very uh, unique and individual journey. Jiu-jitsu, I like everything in, in, in life, right? In, in any sport. But in our world here, I, you just achieved the place that you're, you, you will be looked up to. So yeah, honor your belt, honor, your, honor yourself. Roger, is there anything you'd like to add with, with that? <clears throat> I think it's, it's a journey, you know. The, the, the black belt is a huge achievement because it takes such a long time to get it, you know. And, uh, but I think when people get the black belt, you know, they realize that it's, it's, it's not the end of the journey. It's, it's not your, uh, even though there might be your last belt, but it's like you have still so much to learn, you know. There's, uh, I think, the beginners, they might have the impression that, oh, when I get the black belt, they kind of already know almost everything. But, uh, you know, it's just a, like a, a ocean of uh, information and things for, for you to still learn that it's like it's a long, long process, you know, even I can say that for myself, you know, the day that I got my black belt till today, you know, it's like, you know, the knowledge and you know, my game, I mean, let's say now, let's say when I was still competing, my last uh, year as a competitor, from the first year as a black belt, you know, such a, lot, a huge difference uh, between one and the other. It's, you know, it's still, you know, it's, it's, it's still a journey, you know, it's like, it's still a lot, a lot to, to, to learn. But I think it's, it's the pleasure of the journey that is the most important, you know, it's not, you know, once you, you, you love jiu-jitsu, you train because you like it. It's, you train forever, you know, if your body allows you. That's a great answer. Thank you, guys. Um, Roger, this is another one from Steve. And he said that Anthony Smith, who you beat recently, has challenged for the UFC light heavyweight belt. Is there any chance that you might compete in MMA again? There, Roger, I've lost you a little bit. None. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you hear me? <laughs> Can you hear me now? I'm glad to hear that. Actually. I say, <laughs> yeah, I say uh, zero. You know, there's no no chance I will compete again. I think I'm just another stage in my life. That's like I, you know, it's my my fighting uh, days are over. Um, you know, it's another journey, another chapter. Yeah, that's good to hear. And I'm sure Maritza is relieved as well to hear that. <laughs> yeah, that went. That came and went. He he had his uh, he had his go. He did well, and um, yeah, another chapter. That was. It's a part of the journey. It was good. It was good. It was a good journey. It was a good so journey. We've been going for almost an hour, so I've got one more, one more question. This one's for, for Maurizio. What has been your experience of aging in jiu-jitsu? Is there anything that you've needed to change or adapt as you've gotten older? And that's again from avant-garde jiu-jitsu. Um, I think, yeah, there's a lot of things that you have to change as you get older. There's a lot of things that you can't really do anymore. You know, you can't expect like old, old, because I'm not, you, you, you guys are still kind of in the middle, 30s, 40s, 50s, but I think my life really changed after the, after 
after 50, things get different. Your, your body doesn't react the same. And um, even though you, you what, I, what I've been doing during this lockdown is doing a little bit of workout. And that, that strangely enough, that, that made a difference again. And, and, and it helps me. The, the problem is that sometimes that you don't, you, you teach all day and you don't really have time to, oh, well, I'm gonna take an hour to go to the gym and do a little bit of workout and come back to the, to the academy. But I have to find time to do that because otherwise my, my, my body, uh, you, you have to protect yourself a little bit more a lot, a lot more than, than when you're younger that you can get away with, you know? You can't now, as you get older, you can't. And in a lot of situations, I train very carefully who I'm gonna train with. I don't want any clumsy blue belts, you know, with flying stuff trying. No, I don't need to prove anything anymore. So, you know, train with people that you are your friends, that you can, uh, change ideas and there's no reason to go into a class and oh, I'm gonna train with everybody today it's, it's just plain silly I don't really care anymore sometimes they just sometimes you want to go a bit harder sometimes you want to go a little bit oh I want to train a little bit more today I'm feeling really good or on today I, I don't want to do that much just have to play along but how you're feeling that day, you know, how that, how you're going, if you're not, don't have that much work that week, or I can go a little bit hard because I don't have anything tomorrow, but mostly, yeah, look after yourself and, um, you know, some, a lot of situations, <clears throat> give the position up, you know, don't strain yourself that much, the, 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 you know, it, it just, just try to go easy. On your on your on yourself and respect your own body. Learn to listen to it. That, that's important. Your body will tell you. Your body will tell you. You still move remarkably. It's. And I think, the I think it's because it, you, it's unbelievable to be honest. But. I th I just think it's because it's something that I've been doing my whole life. So your body kind of, it's like a a swimmer. That, that doesn't go in the water, but he knows how to swim properly, right? <clears throat> I, I might get out of shape and not have so, so much gas anymore. Are you there, Maritza? I've lost you a little bit. <laughs> there you go, I've got you back. Yeah. So oh. that, that's the last question I had on my on my list. I don't know if I, either you or Roger have anything you'd like to leave us with or anything that you'd like to, to say before we, we close up. Just a pleasure being here, Mark. Thanks for the invitation. Yeah. Now I'm going to go back to homeschooling. <laughs> <laughs> Real difficulties. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This has been lovely. It's it, so nice to see you, you know. both. And so nice to see the gym in the background. I'm missing you guys so much. And yeah, Thanks, Mark. It's funny to see the, the gym empty like this. It's mm, sad. Yeah, we're getting there. It's going to come back. Soon. Come Very back. soon. Yeah. Okay. Thank Very you so soon. much, guys. It's been really, really nice to talk yeah. about. Yeah. Thank you, Mark. Yeah. It was nice. Yeah. I'll see you soon, anyway, Maritza, I'm sure, this week. So. Gustavo and Linda. You guys are in the gym, eh? Yeah. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> Vale, Marisão. Nice. Tomou um bom café essa semana aí, Gustavo. Vamos, vamos, vamos sim. Vou chegar aí agora. Vou ficar aqui a semana toda. Beleza, então. Tá marcado. Tá bom, a gente se fala. Valeu, Marisão. Obrigadão. Dá um abraço. Tchau, tchau. 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 Tchau, t